Conversation topics that women love. These conversation topics are going to be the things that are going to make your conversations way more interesting if you're tired of having platonic, boring, and kind of surface level conversations. These topics keep the conversation much more interesting than if you just didn't talk about any of these. Normally, guys who are logical, who go things like step by step, they have a tough time connecting with women because the stuff that's interesting to them to talk about is very different from what a lot of women find interesting. But I'm going to give you topics that not only are women going to be engaged and interested, in, but they're also going to want to know more about you when you talk about these sorts of things, okay? So the way that you say things matter, but these are the things that are going to be easy shots for you to make an engaging conversation with somebody. So I'm going to give you thing number one, interesting topic to talk about with women, personality types. So are you an introvert or an extrovert? I think I'm a bit of both. You're a bit of both? Yeah. Really? I thought you were an introvert. Well, you know, I'm forced extrovert because of my job. <laughs> forced extrovert, okay. But naturally, you're introverted, right? Absolutely. Okay, gotcha. I could tell because when we were in that crowd over there, I could in the sense that you were like, I need to get out of here because you're like overstimulated. Oh yeah, definitely. It was too much in there. Yeah, yeah. When women talk about things, guys like to talk about facts and figures. Women like to talk about, you know, how somebody is, you know, what it's like being around them, okay? They've probably taken a bunch of quizzes online that tell them what kind of person they are, okay? And this could have been a personality test. Now, if he's never pers taken a personality test, that's fine. All you have to do is ask the question, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Super easy question to ask. Women usually have an answer for this right off the bat. And then you can talk about what you are. And that will make for a more engaging conversation where now we're talking about her, but in a way that's actually interesting to her, where she can talk to you about how she actually is or how she perceives herself. Not all the time do people actually describe how they are the way they actually are. But this will make for a more engaging topic. Now, if you're dealing with someone who doesn't like to talk about themselves that much, you can talk a little bit about yourself first and almost always they will open up after that. Now, personality tests are very related to my next topic. I know y'all gonna hate it because I hated it at first, and that's horoscopes. So what's your sign? Oh my God, I have no idea what my sign is. What's your sign? I'm an Aquarius. You're an Aquarius. Yeah. What, is, uh, what does that mean? Well, we're the best, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. Do you feel like you identify with like the characteristics of an Aquarius? Well, I feel like I identify with my entire chart, but Aquarius, yes, I thrive being an Aquarius. The first thing I hear when I bring up this subject is, Lloyd, horoscopes aren't real. I know they're not real, okay? They're just made up. But if it's real for her, if it's something that she believes, if she believes she's an Aquarius and she has those characteristics, then yeah, it matters. And she's talking about herself. So typically what I'll ask uh, when somebody brings up the horoscope thing or whatever is I will ask, well, are you actually like an Aquarius? You know, well, what makes you think you're an Aquarius? Like, what do you do that's like similar to that? Um, and they usually have an answer, right? Sometimes they don't believe in horoscopes themselves, but they, they've read it because it's like, it's just something that a lot of people, especially women, really enjoy reading about. You know, it's fun to them, but, and other people take it seriously, but it's something that they enjoy talking about. So they can talk about the characteristics that they share with an Aquarius, or maybe something that they don't share about that sort of thing. They'll probably ask for your sign. So this is an opportunity for you to be interested, but it's also an opportunity for you to learn more about what they think about themselves. Number three is relationships. Now, typically men like to talk about like facts and things like that. Uh, women like to talk about relationships, okay? And the reason why they like to talk about this is because that's the stuff that they think about. That's stuff that matters to them most. Their friends, their family, their boyfriend, those kinds of things are stuff that is gonna occupy a lot of their mind. And as it should, your relationships are incredibly important in your life. But it's not something that men on average, I say on average, think about as much as women do. So a very easy question to ask in regards to this is if she's with, there with a friend or you know maybe you have friends in common, you could ask her, hey, how did you all meet? How did you guys meet each other, right? And then she has a story behind that. And then if there's some drama involved, that's actually where it gets really juicy. The closer and the faster you get to the actual drama of what's going on, the more connected you're actually gonna be to that person. And for me, like, look, I'm not a big drama person, but I love hearing about it because that's the thing that people actually come out. That's where they show their true selves. And no one's gonna tell you this, but the more dirt you get on somebody, the more she's gonna trust you, the more she's actually gonna like feel like you guys have something, the more invested she is with you. The easiest way to get dirt on somebody is to reveal a little bit about yourself. Be a little bit vulnerable yourself first 
and they will follow suit. And a lot of times they got stuff that they're thinking about that's going on. And you being a guy who knows how to talk about that sort of thing makes it that much easier for her to connect with you. Number four is gonna be ambitions and passions. You know, this is something that I love talking about because I have a lot of ambitions and passions. I wanna help as many men as possible, both online and personally. Do you have any dreams, do you have any goals, do you have any passions that you're into? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Uh... That's okay, let me say it to you this way. Okay. If you could have all the money in the world and limited resources and limited time and limited fame, what would be the thing you would most wanna do? Three, two, one, go. Frolic. In frolic. <laughs> you want to frolic in the woods? Yeah. So let me picture this. Okay. You're, you got your own cabin. You got your own, maybe like uh, some critters that are your friends. Oh, you're speaking my language now. Now, if you're talking to someone who doesn't have a whole lot of passions, a great question for you is to ask, hey, if you could have all the money in the world, all the resources, all the fame, all the time, what would you do? One, two, three, go. People usually have an idea of what they like to do or who they like to be. And just because they're not that person doesn't mean that they still have some sort of aspiration within them. Now, the closer you get to this point, the more you're gonna be able to know them. And that's why I love that question is because people start to think about all their limitations in life. They start to be realistic. You don't want her to be realistic with this. You want to know what her true desires are. The closer you get to her true desires, the closer you're gonna know her and the more invested she is going to be when she's talking to you. If you have goals and aspirations, don't talk her ear off about it. I want you to mention it. I want you to mention like, you know, some goals that you have, but don't talk forever about it. Four, travel and crazy stories. So you've done any traveling? Oh yeah, I love to travel. Oh nice, where's your favorite spot? Well, you know, it's not a big deal because it's Mexico, right? And I'm so close right, to right, from right. Texas, but my experience in Mexico, I went parasailing with my best friend. Travel is a great thing. I've been to a lot of places. I'm sure she's been to some places too. Now, if you're talking to somebody a little bit young, she might not have gone too many places. That's okay. A perfect question you can ask them is, hey, if you could travel anywhere, where would you go? And then she might say, oh, I want to go to Greece. Oh, that's awesome. Greece is a great place. What made you want to go to Greece? And you can just talk about it. Like if you've been to that place, or maybe you haven't traveled to a lot of places, but you can talk about the places that you'd like to go travel to. Now, travel stories, if you have traveled, there's some of the best things out there. They lead to better and better stories. And this is actually how you go down the path where you, know, you can start learning some more personal things about that person. And I know people want to stay away from personal topics because they themselves don't want to get out there, but that's the fastest way and the easiest way for you to connect with somebody and form a bond with them, okay? If she knows a lot of personal things about you and accepts you, and you know a lot of personal things about her and accept her, she's gonna like you so much more, okay? So I try to get to that point so it doesn't stay at this like surface level conversation. I really want to get in deep, you know? Number six isn't gonna be so much a topic, but it is gonna be figuring out her interests. So what have you been up to this week? I've been working a lot this week. Working a lot this week, all week? All week, every day. Oh my God, that is no good. Yeah. What was the last fun thing you, like truly like fun thing that you've done where you kind of like let loose? Oh, I went to a pop punk emo night recently. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, it, saying to my eighth grade heart. <laughs> oh my God, did they play Blink-182? Uh, I wish they played more, but yeah. So let's say none of those things are hitting. She hasn't taken any personality tests. She doesn't know her horoscope. She hasn't traveled anywhere. She doesn't have any goals or ambitions. She doesn't have any friends. You know, like very unlikely that any of those things are true. But let's say that that happened. What are some ways that you can get to her actual interest and find something in common for the both of you so that way you can continue the conversation? The easiest way to do this is just to start asking what the last fun thing she did was. It might be a festival. It might be a wedding. It might be, um, you know, she might even really like a show that she's into. By the way, if you guys have a show that you guys watch together, uh, that's an easy way for you to, you know, keep texting when a new episode comes out and stuff like that. Very helpful. You watch Game of Thrones, right? I actually just watched it. Nice. Who's your favorite character? Uh, hot take, Tyrion. You love Tyrion. Yeah, I love Peter Dinklage to start with. Everybody loves Dinklage. You know, they made that character so good in that show. So what you want to do is you want to get to these interests. You know, whatever she brings up, you know, if you know a little bit about that, then that could be an option for you to talk more. So if it was a festival, you know, you ask her what kind of festival it was, what kind of music was there. And then you guys can connect on that, share stories around that. Now, if you are not connecting on any of these things. And what I want you to do is just start sharing stories about yourself and things that you've done. And I want you to share stories. And the reason why you share stories is because there's gonna be little bits and pieces that she can 
tap into, that she's going to want to make connections with. And if she does make a connection with one of those things, then that's going to be the thing that you talk about. And then you can save the rest of the story for later. Me personally, I think some of the best stories are stories that happened when I was a kid or when I was in high school. Because, you know, if you're an adult, the stuff that you did in high school, nobody cares about. Nobody cares what kind of person you were in high school. And as a result, that means that she can share crazy wild things that she's done. And the closer you get to that, like I said, the more you're gonna be able to connect with that person. All right, and the last and final thing, number seven, we talked about a lot of different stuff, is gonna be humor. And the easiest way to have humor, you guys, is to memorize dad jokes. I am not exaggerating, okay? If you're not a funny person and you don't know how to make people laugh, literally go online, type into chat GPT, give me the best dad jokes you got, and just memorize all of them. All right, I got a joke for you. You ready? I was born ready. <laughs> What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back to you? Mm, I don't know, what? A stick. <laughs> you got dad jokes, huh? I got dad jokes all day and I'm not even a dad. I'm preparing for the role of being a dad. Wow. I'm making bad jokes all the time. <laughs> if you're in this serious surface level position and you bust out a horrible joke, it real builds a little bit of drama, it allows her to think, and then it gets her to giggle a little bit. Even if she doesn't giggle, at least she knows that you're a fun person. So having humor, a humorous topic of conversation, those kinds of things are gonna really help. Focus on being fun and silly more than being funny. Because any comedian will tell you that you never know what's gonna hit until you try it. And so practice being fun and silly, so that way even if your joke falls flat, at least you guys had fun on that journey together with it. So those are the seven topics of conversation that women are gonna love you guys. But again, what I said at the beginning is that these topics are gonna work better than most topics, but you can talk about anything if you know how to talk. I, as a physics major, have talked about physics with women. I've talked about it, I remember I met this stripper one time years ago, and she really enjoyed talking about physics with me. But you gotta learn how to talk. and. All my guys who go through my program, you know, they learn how to do this. They learn how to be an engaging person. They learn how to talk in a way that no matter what their interests are, whether they're nerdy or a metalhead or, you know, they work all the time, you know, they're like a self-development junkie. They know how to talk about things in a way that gets the other person interested, okay? And so that's what you got to learn how to do. But too often I find guys, they don't really know how to talk about things in the right way. And they need somebody to actually pinpoint where they're going wrong. What's going on with them, why they're not able to connect, why they're not able to actually gain a woman's interest, why they lose a girl as soon as they start talking to her or can't think of what to say. You know, what is it about them that's blocking them from getting to that next point? That's really the benefit of personal coaching is it allows me to see what it is that's going on with you, give you an honest assessment, which I've, very often your friends won't be able to give you. They're either gonna lie or they're probably making the same mistakes themselves. Um, and so that's why I have a coaching program. So if you want to get actual feedback and a step-by-step -step process to fix those things, and I've handled all kinds of clients, the link is down below. Click it, fill out the form, and if you're a good fit, we'll hop on a call and we'll see if you're ready. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for watching. Good luck out there, and I'll see you in the next video.